All weather flying in a high performance jet aircraft requires a high degree of precision flying. For this reason, it is essential that the Navy pilot acquire an exceptional degree of skill in flying by aircraft attitude, especially during departure, penetration, and approach. The most important instrument for attitude flying is the All Attitude Indicator, or AAI. For this reason, this film will concentrate upon the use of the AAI in conjunction with the Bearing Distance Heading Indicator, or BDHI, and other instruments used during all weather operations. The electrically driven three-axis AJB-3 all-attitude indicator is a highly stable platform with virtually none of the drifting or precession that was experienced with earlier vacuum and electrically operated models. In addition, the gyro will not tumble and does not require caging during acrobatics. For example, during a barrel roll, this degree of gyro stability is readily apparent. Notice how the instrument precisely displays every attitude throughout the entire maneuver. At the completion of the maneuver, there is little or no precession or drift, with the AAI always indicating the true aircraft attitude in relation to the surface of the Earth. The same degree of stability is experienced during all other maneuvers. Again, despite pulling more than four Gs, there is no indication of tumble, precession, or drift, with the heading accuracy maintained at plus or minus two degrees and pitch at one half degree. It is this high degree of precision that makes the AAI such a valuable instrument for attitude flying under all weather conditions. It is during night or all weather operations that proper use of the AAI is especially important since it is the primary reference for all maneuvers. It should be noted that while the TA-4F aircraft equipment and speeds will be used throughout this demonstration, the general principles apply to all high-performance aircraft. Before takeoff, the pitch trim knob is checked to make sure it is set on the null mark. This setting ensures proper alignment of the AAI. takeoff, use of the AAI begins during the roll when it is used as a heading reference and an attitude indicator. This aircraft rotation places the pipper 12 to 14 degrees above the horizon. If this attitude is held, the aircraft will lift off at the proper airspeed for the gross weight being carried without getting on the back side of the power curve or increasing drag to the marginal point. This 12 to 14 degree nose up attitude is maintained during the initial climb out. Aircraft climb speed dictates the exact degree. Once the gear and flaps are raised, the 14 degree attitude is held while accelerating to climb speed. Then the nose is slowly raised to 16 to 18 degrees in order to maintain climb air speed. In this operation, the departure route will be flown as specified in the high altitude instrument departure chart. The pattern calls for a right turn after takeoff to a 358 heading. This heading is flown until a right turn is made onto a 10 nautical mile arc. The track on the arc is then followed to a desired 124 degree radial. The bearing distance heading indicator and DME must be watched closely during this outbound portion of the flight in order to hold the proper heading and to prepare for lead in to the 10 mile arc. The number of miles required for the lead is based upon the familiar thumb rule, which uses 1% of the ground speed for a radius of turn in miles at one half standard rate turn. Thus, 1% of a 250 knot ground speed would be two and a half nautical miles, so that the turn should be started when the aircraft is two and a half miles short of the arc or seven and a half miles from the TACAN station. Because the DME displays distance from the station, 
determining the exact point to begin the turn, it is relatively easy when traveling along a TACAN radial. Making the transition to the 310 knot climb, which is made at an altitude of 10,000 feet, is accomplished by lowering the nose to plus five degrees, or about two pippers above the horizon. This attitude is held until speed reaches 310 knots. The attitude is then readjusted to maintain the speed. Following an arc around a tack end station merely requires holding the BDHI needle at right angles to the aircraft heading. Distance is maintained by observing the DME. If the distance should vary, positioning the needle ahead or behind the wingtip will correct the flight path along the arc. While traveling along an arc, it is necessary to plan the lead for turning along a radio, in this case, the outbound radio. The formula for determining mileage along an arc is based upon the distance between the radials. 60 miles from a tack end station, the distance between two radials one degree apart is approximately one nautical mile. This means that at half the distance from the station, the distance between the two radials is one half a nautical mile. At 10 nautical miles, the distance is one sixth of a mile. At this point then, it takes six radials to equal one mile along the arc. Thus, at a ground speed of 350 knots, turning lead should be three and a half nautical miles, or 21 radials. Subtracting 21 from the desired outbound radial of 124 leaves 103. So when the 103 degree radial is reached, the pilot begins his outbound turn. The one and a half degree per second turn positions the aircraft on the 124 degree outbound radial. The needle, of course, points to the tack end station back along the reciprocal. While flying the arc and making the turn, the departure speed and climb were maintained. The AAI continues to be used to make any attitude adjustments during the departure. Upon reaching the desired altitude, the attitude is adjusted for level flight using the thumb rule of leading the maneuver by 10% of the rate of climb. Level flight for most aircraft requires a slight nose-up attitude of one to four degrees, depending upon the speed of the aircraft. During instrument flight, corrections or changes in attitude or altitude should be primarily through the use of the AAI with other instruments used as guides. All weather navigation has been simplified and made highly accurate through the use of TACAN stations shown on en route high altitude charts, the BDHI, and the DME. It should be remembered that while station passage can provide an accurate fix, the TACAN distance indicated is from the aircraft to the ground transmitter and is slant range. In planning a TACAN penetration and approach, it should be remembered that the pilot must provide his own navigation. According to TACAN routes and altitude minimums as published in the FLIP TACAN approach charts, particular attention should be paid to the designated initial approach fix, holding patterns, the penetration track, required altitudes, and the missed approach procedure for the assigned runway. The pilot must then determine the maneuvering required after crossing the IAF to place the aircraft in a position to intercept and fly the initial approach course. In this case, the pilot plans to approach the IAF from a position on the 115 radial. The assigned IAF is inside the holding pattern at the intersection of the 13 nautical mile arc and the 140 radial. IAF altitude is flight level 180 for the assigned runway, penetration will be flown on a 13 nautical mile arc to the 342 radial. Final approach will be along this radial. The TACAN final approach fix is at eight nautical miles and the altitude is 1,800 feet. This is the plan that will be followed for the penetration and approach. 
The plan is put into operation by descending to the IAF altitude while flying a course directly to the IAF, which in this instance is the same as the holding fix. For planning a holding pattern entry, the pilot is provided with a diagram in the upper right corner of the approach plate. Prior to reaching the holding fix, the aircraft is slowed to holding speed. Upon crossing the holding fix, the pilot begins his turn to place him in the holding pattern. While in the holding pattern, the pilot must maintain his assigned altitude. The pilot remains in the holding pattern until he receives approach clearance. The initial approach fix is crossed inbound on the radial at the designated distance and assigned altitude. After crossing the IAF, the pilot turns to intercept the 13-mile arc and lowers the nose while setting the power and extending the speed brakes for the initial penetration. Once the desired power is set, the AAI is used for holding the proper attitude to maintain the desired speed. While in the clean phase of penetration, in this instance flying a 13 nautical mile arc, the descent is made according to the flip approach requirements. At some point prior to the TACAN final approach fix, the aircraft is leveled and slowed, and the gear and flaps are lowered. As the gear and flaps come down and the aircraft slows to approach speed, aircraft attitude is increased to maintain altitude. With the gear down, the angle of attack indexer is operative. Once the optimum angle of attack and speed have been established, maintaining the indexer donut only requires slight power and attitude adjustments. Flying the penetration arc is accomplished in the usual manner. In this case, with the BDHI needle pointing off the right wing and the distance holding at 13 nautical miles. Nearing the end of the arc, the pilot plans his turn to the approach radial, which in this instance will give an inbound heading of 162 degrees. Since the arc is very close to 10 nautical miles from the TACAN station, the six degree per mile rule is used to plan the lead to the turn. At the slow speeds used when in a dirty configuration, standard rate turns of three degrees per second are used. Therefore, the inbound turn should be started one and a half nautical miles or nine degrees from the inbound radial. Altitudes shown on the flip terminal plate have been carefully observed during penetration so that the approach turn is made at the designated altitude. The AAI is still used to maintain altitude and attitude. Approaching the TACAN final approach fix, the altitude continues to be controlled with power adjustments. After leaving the final approach fix, descent is immediately started to the minimum descent altitude. Upon reaching the minimum descent altitude, the nose is raised to the proper attitude on the AAI for level flight in the dirty configuration at the optimum angle of attack. The pilot then flies level at the minimum descent altitude until reaching the visibility minimum. If the pilot does not then have the runway in sight, he must execute a missed approach. Basically, three instruments are used to execute a smooth missed approach. The AAI furnishes attitude, heading, and wing position information. Then the airspeed indicator replaces the angle of attack indicator. Finally, the altimeter is used to climb to and stop at assigned or designated altitudes. Once the climbing attitude and speed have been established, and below 10,000 feet, this speed should not exceed 250 knots, the missed approach becomes a routine departure. The pilot should already have familiarized himself with the radial he must follow to enter the missed approach holding pattern. However, while climbing from a missed approach, clearance may be given for a new approach without entering a holding pattern 
or returning to the initial approach fix, depending upon local procedures. If necessary to enter the holding pattern, the normal DME procedure is used to plan the turns. The pilot flies as directed to a position where the GCA final approach controller will be able to control the aircraft for a precision approach to a landing. This may include instructions to perform the landing cockpit check. The aircraft is then slowed to approach speed and landing gear and flaps are lowered. After lowering the nose slightly for starting the glide slope, the optimum airspeed places the horizon bar about one pipper width or two to three degrees lower than for level flight. Once the angle of attack has been established at three o'clock for an optimum approach airspeed with GCA, only minor power adjustments should be required. The vertical speed indicator may be used as a cross-reference during descent after the speed and attitude are established. In effect, the VSI becomes a power indicator when a constant descent attitude is maintained. Today, the pilot of a high-performance aircraft may be called upon to fly at any time of the day or night and under the most adverse weather conditions. Such all-weather operations have been greatly simplified by the introduction of the modern all-attitude indicator. The proper use of this instrument can greatly reduce the pilot's workload, especially during penetration and landing approach. Used in conjunction with the bearing distance heading indicator and the angle of attack indexer, these highly reliable instruments assure precision navigation, penetration, approach, and landing, regardless of minimal weather or the darkness of night.